I have mixed feelings, you know, coming back to the country of my birth. It was tempting not to come back, but I wanted to have that experience. I just want to basically rekindle in my own mind the extent of this tragedy. I was five years old when the Nazi armies invaded Poland. I survived because uh, we had a Russian maid who was uh, willing to take me out of the ghetto uh, as her son. So once my life was no longer in danger, I was facing a couple of uh, really searing questions. Why was I allowed to live when so many other good people were not? And what could I do to repay the debt? This bothered me for a number of years until 1972 I was uh, working for an environmental consulting firm and they sent me to a Midwestern slaughterhouse and I suddenly came across piles of hearts and lungs and uh, heads and hooves and discarded body parts. My first reaction was to recoil in horror as most people would, but uh, very quickly I made the association with the piles of body parts I saw in Auschwitz. The use of cattle cars to transport people to the gas chambers. The crowding in the wood containers of the victims. The arbitrary designation of uh, who lives and who dies. And this is when I resolved to devote the rest of my life to fighting the oppression of animals raised for food. The major lesson I draw from the Holocaust is that we should be focusing on the oppressive mindset animal oppression begins when you first tell a child that the dog on his couch is to be cherished and loved and appreciated and the pig on his plate is to be abused and killed and dismembered and eaten for food. Of course I feel much more strongly about the Holocaust than about any other tragedy because the Holocaust involved my own people. But again, in the moral universe, it really shouldn't matter who the victims are. Whether the animals should be compared to the Jews, that's not the point. It's not about the victims. We need to get to the source. We need to get to the oppressive mindset and stop that. That's the solution. If we can convince people that living beings should not be oppressed, then we will, in effect, have stopped all oppression. So when I made this decision, a number of well-meaning friends, uh, they would say, Alex, why animals, when so many human problems remain unresolved? because animals are the most vulnerable, the most defenseless living beings on Earth. Animals share many of the same feelings that we have. They experience affection, joy, sadness, fear, and pain. Perhaps the most important reason that I have decided to work on farm animal oppression is because I can. I, just by myself, have the awesome power of sparing each year about 100 
land and aquatic animals from terrible abuse and death. And if I can persuade just one other person to join me in this endeavor, I will have doubled my awesome power. All vegetables, all grains, nuts, and uh, this stuff is delicious. Oh my gosh, how am I going to eat this? <laughs>